Hello and welcome back to Football Index Moneyball. In this video, we have another pick of the day for you, and this pick is the second in the mini series of ultra low price players who would usually be too cheap for me to look at for fear of spiking the price. I have to say, I'm enjoying having a wider range of players available to me to use for these videos, as so far the cheaper players are the ones who've made me the most reliable profits, both personally and on the series. And for today's pick, we have an injury pick for you who's due to return to training any day now. He has a yield of over 11% from a top defender win on a triple match day back in 2018, and if you convert that to today's payouts, it would actually be double the return, so it would be over 22% instant return. Before we get going, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to follow me on Twitter, then you can search for at Index Moneyball, and there's referral links in the description if you want to sign up for Football Index, Football Index Edge and Football Index Club. There's also a link to my Patreon page where you can help support the channel, which gives access to some bonus picks, portfolio reviews and other added benefits. So the player I've gone for today is Kevin Malquit at Napoli. Malquit is a 28-year-old French right-back who, after a good first season in Italy last year and a solid start to this one, unfortunately suffered a serious injury back in October when he ruptured his ACL and effectively ended his season. So the first positive for this pick is that the delay in the season has actually done him a favour as he could potentially now play a few matches and his return date was estimated at April 28th when he first injured himself. As I mentioned in the intro, Malquit has already won the equivalent of a gold match day top defender in his first year at Napoli. The thing that's really impressive about this is his win actually came in a nil-nil draw so he managed this without any goals or assists. This for me is a major plus and is something I often look for in a player as when they do chip in with a rare goal or an assist then they should always be in with a shout for PB. On that day he won the triple match day with a score of 181 which back on the old matrix was considered a good score. And when I looked up his historical data it showed that he actually managed this score twice last season, the first coming in September in his first appearance for Napoli and again coming in a game where he did not score or assist, although they did win that game. That day he lost out to Manuel Akanji, who took down Starman with a monster score of 2-6-1, scoring in a 7-0 win for Dortmund over Nuremberg. But the fact that Malquit managed to get that score twice last season is definitely a plus for me on his potential for him to win PB in the future. Looking at his 12-month graph, you can see that he's currently 7p down from his peak of 42p, which came at the start of this season. He then dropped down to a low of 29p following the ACL tear, so we can now get in for just 20% premium over the initial days after the injury, which is a pretty good deal considering he's about to return to football. As I mentioned with a couple of other injury picks, I'm not only looking at his past peak, I'm also considering the amount of growth the index has had since then. So when you look at attacking fullbacks with solid PB records, they've arguably had some of the most growth on the index, so things are already looking pretty positive for Malquit here. Just before I move off his profile, I also wanted to show you his average PB over the last year. Now he's only played 10 games, but this is still a great set of stats, and someone could correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think some of these would have been on the old matrix, which would have resulted in lower scores for a player of this type. Moving over to Malquit's transfer marked, here's one of the downsides to Malquit, and that is he's not won any trophies or had any caps for France. I think at this stage of his career it's unlikely he's going to play for France now. But for a player of this price, I wouldn't really expect possible Euro or World Cup matches anyway, to be fair. As I mentioned with the Lozano video, I think Napoli are likely to be playing in Europa League next season, which is a big plus as there are weaker opponents and more matches than in the Champions League. So for such a cheap player, you should get plenty of shots at PB from him. For his career stats, he has 148 games with 2 goals and 17 assists. I'd like to have seen more goals from him, but this still equates to a combined goal and assist record of 0.15 per 90, which is a good average for a defender and for a player of his price it's huge. Also, as I mentioned earlier, he's managed some big scores without goals or assists, so I'm really happy with those figures when you consider that. For his positional stats, he's played the vast majority of his games at right back, but he also has a few appearances at right midfield and a couple at left back. So he has some versatility to his game, but with this pick, the potential for a transfer is not really part of the purchase thesis, so the importance for this is minimised anyway. In this table, I've compiled all of Malquit's PB eligible games for the last four seasons, and the first thing to point out is that although he's not managed any goals in this time, he's actually running slightly above his career average, with 0.16 assists. For the rest of his stats, there's some very impressive numbers there in bold, both on the attacking and the defensive side. He's just below 1 in the key passes per 90, and his shots per game is a lot lower than I would like, even for a defender. But with 2.2 successful dribbles, 1.8 successful tackles, 2.1 clearances and 2.3 interceptions, and over 40 passes per 90, 
it's easy to see how Malquite has managed to get such high scores without any goals or assists. For the profit target analysis, I stuck to 28 year old defenders, but I used a mix of centre backs and full backs as they all compete for the same dividends anyway. And following a comment that I received on the last ultra value player video for Vieto, I'm going to focus on the profit ranges if Malquit was priced at 40p instead of his current price of 35p. I've shown the potential profits for both still though. For my comparable purchase options, I went for Phil Jones at Manchester United and Gen A at Getafe. Phil Jones is another player I own and I think that with the right move he could definitely show a good profit. But with his current situation unknown and his chances of an England recall highly unlikely, I think the potential for PV wins and just the total number of PV matches you can expect from Jones is likely to be lower than Malqui. Gen A is a good comparison as Getafe are going well this season and also look like they're going to make the Europa League. But with the combined goals and assists per 90 at just 0.03 and the fact that Napoli overall would be the much stronger team as they're having a bit of a bad year whereas Getafe are having an unusually strong year, I think Malqui is again the better option. For my low target, I have the perfect player to compare with and that's Mario Rui, also of Napoli but on the left side of defence. Rui has won a couple of dividends this year with a gold day and a silver day top defender but he has a much lower career goals and assists record at 0.08 per 90 versus Malquit's 0.15. Overall, I think that Rui and Malqui are pretty similar in terms of their expected future dividends, so this is a great benchmark for where you could expect to see Malqui if he'd have played this season and kept up the form he showed last year. For my mid-target, I went for Kenny Lala at Strasbourg. This is another pretty good comparison, as Lala is also a French right-back who's unlikely to play for his country. They have the same combined goal and assist record. Lala does have the slightly better PV record as he takes corners for Strasbourg, but he only won two PVs versus Malquit's one, and one of those came this season. There's also the fact that Malquit will have European football next year and Lala won't. So if Malquit were to take down a PV win when he returns to action, I would expect him to pass this price easily. For my high target, I went for Thomas Munier at PSG. This is a bit of a stretch as a target to be honest, as Munier has a much better goal and assist record at 0.28 per 90 and he also has a better PV record. But I actually think he's pretty underpriced versus many other options for the high target who were Halstenberg and Carvajal. So if you were looking for a more premium pick, I think Mooney is a great option. For Malqui, I don't expect he could surpass this price unless he started to chip in with more assists and even a goal or two. And he would probably need to take down two or more PV wins next season. Although unlikely, these things could definitely happen though. So it's good to have this to aim at in our best case scenario. Just for reference, Halstenberg's currently trading at £1.30 and Carvajal's at £1.27. So using Munia was the conservative high target really. So based off of a 40p entry price, that leaves us with profit target range of 50% for the low, 60% for the mid and 133% for the high. These are great set of profit targets and in reality, if Malquit can return to form and run a bit better with his goals and assists, then he could smash through the low and medium targets there. The real risk for this one is that Malquit doesn't regain his full fitness from injury or if he were to suffer another injury setback. But for me, it looks as though he's still priced as an injured player, so this risk is pretty low when you consider the potential for profit. So that's all I have time for today. Again, if you're interested in some premium memberships to improve your trading, there's links to Football Index Club, Football Index Edge and to my Patreon page in the description. Thanks for watching and good luck on the index.